Let's start the program today with the latest study that has come out. It's a major new study released by the very reputed Lancet, which talks about neurology and how it has evolved over the years. And what it says is quite staggering that more than 3 billion people worldwide are living with neurological conditions. In fact, WHO contributed to this analysis saying that neurological conditions are now the leading cause of ill health and disability worldwide. Since 1990, the absolute number of individuals living with or dying from neurological conditions has increased and increased by 18%. Majority of these neurological deaths, in fact, are over 80% of them occur in low and middle income countries, mostly due to access to treatment, access to healthcare, access to information as well. The study also concluded the top 10 neurological conditions that lead to death. This includes stroke, neonatal brain injury, migraine, dementia, diabetic neuropathy, which is sort of a nerve damage that happens, meningitis, epilepsy, neurological complications from preterm birth, autism spectrum disorder, nervous system cancers, all of these. Interestingly, the neurological conditions cause more disability in men compared to women. However, there are some conditions like migraine or dementia where women are disproportionately affected. So, lots to unpack from this Lancet report. But let's keep our focus today this morning on the elderly. Seeing our parents age is one of the hardest things all of us can conclude. And neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's can be a major concern because there is no cure. A lot of these are genetic, but also interestingly, the study says that a lot of them are contributors from our lifestyle. So on the program today, we focus on how to prevent this in the elderly and if not to prevent, how to at least delay the onset of any neurological condition. Joining us on the program today is Dr. Puneet Rana. He's HOD Neurosurgery, uh, MBBS MS at uh, the Yathar Super Speciality Hospital. Also with us this morning, uh, we've got Dr. Chinu Agarwal, Director of Feeling Minds. She is a PhD and uh, international affiliate of the American Psychology Association. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Let me begin with you, you. Dr. Rana. Uh, the numbers that have been thrown up by this study are very, very staggering. They talk about how neurological deaths, uh, conditions are perhaps one of the leading causes and now even bigger or as big as diabetes in across the world. Uh, the numbers that they have spoken about is a dramatic rise that we have seen over a period of the last decade or so. A 43% global population actually succumbing to neurological disorders. Give me your own understanding of how uh, this happens in India, for example, where diabetes is already such a leading cause of concern. Uh, I would like to, first of all, slightly modify it. It's not exactly the neurological disorders. It is basically the uh, causes of morbidity and mortality in which the brain and the spinal cord is involved. So it can be some diseases, uh, you know, mm. which are affecting the body outside the yeah. nervous system, but it is involving the nervous system. Mm. So when you involve uh, mm. all these factors that there are some diseases which are involving outside the neuroaxis, but they are involving the brain as a secondary target then this number increases staggeringly. So when you talk about, uh, you know, the mm. old age, the maximum uh, cause of morbidity and mortality is the cardiovascular reasons, that is the stroke or any diseases which are giving rise mm. to the bleeding in the brain. Mm. So when you talk about the stroke, stroke is a global killer. So when you talk about the deaths, almost 30% uh, of the deaths are uh, attributed to the stroke and it is a global killer and if you talk about the degenerative conditions then the parkinsonism alzheimer's are the leading causes and then obviously the tumors so when you mm -hmm. take uh, all of these together it is contributing to somewhere around 40 percent so i agree to uh, what the numbers have uh, come out to be in the study 
I see. But if you look at the numbers closely, you know, so far we had talked about how a lot of these diseases that we've also highlighted, we are playing those on our screen as well for our viewers, are genetic. But a major contributor to these are lifestyle factors. It includes things like pollution. It includes obesity. It includes diet as well. So, Dr. Rana, what in your opinion is happening here when it comes to the diseases and are we seeing an early onset as well uh, you know just like the case of cardiovascular diseases yeah um, you're absolutely right see whenever we talk about the final common result it is dependent upon a lot of factors and all the factors they pencil on to the final common result so uh, the you know contributory factors could be genetic it could be the way you have lived your life or the way the outside contaminants have impacted your body. All of it, the final common pathway is the result that you are getting. So when you are talk of, talking about the stroke, the sedentary habits which are creeping into our society, the lack of exercises and uh, obviously the kind of food that we are eating, which is a drastic change from what the food was being eaten, you know, let us talk about uh, 20 or 30 years back. And obviously, the carcinogens, hmm. you know, if you're talking about the carcinogens, we are talking about whatever you are eating or whatever you are getting inside the body by your respiration or other things, you know. So all these things, they contribute to the diseases which are creeping into our body. Uh, so I agree that uh, the kind of, uh, you know, the lifestyle which has changed in the last 20 to 30 years, one generation only, and the food that we are eating, the contaminants that we are, you know, uh, exposed to our body, they are all contributing to this fact. If we talk about the stroke, if uh, the cholesterol level increases in our body, uh, for example, there has been an advent of diabetes in the society. The blood pressures are increasing. If mm. we talk about the baseline blood pressures, the society, they are increasing. The stress mm. level... Mm the uh, importance of uh, exercise you know it cannot be overemphasized. i think all these factors they are contributing to whatever we are doing right now hmm. right uh, dr agarwal come in on this one you know also what the study has flagged off is the importance of preventive measures to actually reduce the risk of developing some of these conditions and importantly lowering uh, sort of high blood pressure and the rest of it and on TBC we love to talk about solutions so can you yeah. give us some bits in which people can especially the elderly people in their 50s and 60s I don't know if they consider themselves elderly anymore but people in that in that age bracket can do to ensure that they keep their mind and body fit yeah so um, yes let's talk about solutions uh, there are certain things that we can't do about anything about, but there are certain things that we can do a lot about. One of them is being flexible. And when it comes to flexibility, it's not about the, it's not only about the body, you know, um, stretching your body, moving your body, but at the same time, doing some things with your mind. So I would like to, Hmm. Assess any person who is talking to me on this. Are you having any purpose in life? Is your life meaningful and purposeful? If yes, then you look forward to getting up and going about the day. You know, uh, don't take retirements. I mean, you know, make your life some useful for some cause, something, or you know, keep hmm. doing something. So this kind of activity and the second thing is when we are talking about flexibility, the one of the psychological barriers that we face while dealing with elderly is the rigid cognitive uh, opinions or, you know, the uh, conditioning or uh, the patterns that they have got into. This can be broken when you are open to learning new things. And the news is that the good hmm. news is that even in the elderly, new neurons are made. 
so this neuroplasticity is alive which is a new research earlier we used to say that you know neurons can be generated only up to a certain age in the childhood or even uh, till the infant is born and after that no new neurons are created but hmm. taking advantage of this hmm. if we say that you know focus on learning new languages learning new puzzles solving puzzles like sudoku ken ken in the morning uh, talking to people being mm. socially engaged and active mm. and so this morning clubs in the uh, societies where uh, there are senior citizens bonding with each other doing activities you know doing competitions arts and crafts and you know engaging themselves is a big big booster to brain health mm. also when we talk about taking mm. care of them we really have this attitude of doing certain things for them can we change it to doing things with them involving ourselves in our lives ah. and involving them in uh, you know in the decisions that we are taking in the things that we are doing in our lives asking for their opinions and so in parenting we always say going from the telling mode to the asking mode let's do it for the for our parents as well rather than telling them you know you should do this you should go for a morning walk you should be doing this you should and expecting that they should take care of themselves mm. like they have taken care of themselves all their lives and never we were never bothered of the, uh, those kind of responsibilities why can't we you know acknowledge and accept that uh, they are aging Of course, you said in the yeah. you to the yeah. show that it you've is said a, you've said I, lots of interesting things, Dr. Agarwal. But I just want to channelize this once. I think a massive takeaway here is that treat your parents, and especially those elderly at home, by not telling them what to do, but engage with them. Like do it with them. I think that involvement is great. Now there are enough and more books and studies. You are absolutely right, which lay emphasis on developing new skills in the in your senior years. It could be a language. It could be a new hobby, and that's what really keeps your mind stimulated as well. But my question is slightly different, and let me bring in Dr. Rana here as well. For those who have dementia running in the family. for those who have diabetes running in the family for those who have high blood pressure running in the family is there clinical evidence now that it can be avoided completely is that the case and if yes how dr rana first and i'll go to dr agarwal as well uh i would like to uh, give you some hope and uh, obviously tell you the facts also see uh, health is not an all or none phenomenon uh i mean lack of health is not zero and absolute health which is a unknown entity is not 100 it's a continuum so what i can say is that let us talk about diabetes so there is no way that if you are having a high genetic component of diabetes uh, i mean anybody can say that you will not have diabetes but yes if you maintain your weight if you exercise regularly if you take care of what you eat if you have lifestyle modifications then you can reduce your chances of getting diabetes or you can reduce your chances of getting diabetes at an earlier age so there are studies which are showing that if you are having an absolutely you know to take care of all these avoidable factors away then there are 16 to 20% chances that you can have you can not have the diseases which you are supposed to have so mm. if you are leading a simplified life and you avoid contaminants you are having a very disciplined life you exercise daily you uh, watch what you eat then you can prevent in these avoidable cases almost 16 to 20% uh, you know of the factors which could have happened in your life like that like diabetes like blood pressure these are avoidable factors by some extent but yes it is absolutely not an all or none uh, phenomenon or solution Okay but what about other things like dementia what about parkinsons is there a way we can put that on hold as well dr rana quickly uh parkinsonism um uh, you know um 
idiopathic let us talk about the idiopathic parkinsonism it uh, occurs the age of somewhere around 6 to 65 uh, years and uh, it is exacerbated by some factors like repeated trauma to the brain uh, by the stress by obviously the diabetes and uh, you know the blood pressures and the contaminants uh, the pollutants so if a person was supposed to have the parkinsonism at let us say the age of 65 he or she might have it at an early age, earlier age for example 57 58 years of age so uh, we cannot totally prevent it we can only delay it if there are genetic components present and when it happens it always helps that you catch them early for example if you are having a tremor going on mm. at uh, one part of your body you can go to the doctor you can ask uh, your doctor that you are having these uh, you know symptoms can you please evaluate it there are now mm. questionnaire by which we can catch the parkinsonism early and when you catch them early the medication is started early then we can delay the course of the treatment mm. you know uh, for example if you are going to have this uh, complication mm. at this age we can prevent it further so uh, some hope and some no hope you know i would like to be more realistic like a surgeon i think that's a good way to go about and appreciate that dr dana dr agarwal come in then on the delay that we can do so there are certain neurological conditions which perhaps one has to accept if you have been gifted with that gene pool in one form or the other but you can delay there is a way to live with it as well so do you have techniques that people can follow yeah one well, of the things that we can do is um mindfulness and what is mindfulness sometimes we confuse it with uh, meditation or uh, you know uh, something that we'll have to sit at one place and do and it is tedious or it is difficult to do mindfulness is a simpler form of meditation and the good news is that it has research and evidence based in psychological practice and it is coming up as a technique to be present you know especially the elderly they have a tendency to dwell on the past more or they have a tendency of not having any hope for the future or uh, rather giving up on future and saying that bas ab ho gaya and you know we ab rehna hi kitna hai and you know all those uh, attitudes i whenever i go westward you know whether it is london or other parts of europe you see 80 90 people being independent and active and they are not having this attitude of uh, you know bas ho gaya but here uh, as you said 50 onwards we have started saying ki budapa aa gaya and we are going towards uh, you know the last phase of our life so one thing that helps us is mindfulness being able to stay in the present and how do you do it by anchoring your five senses involving them dabbling in colors using your mm. eyes not for the screen all the time you know it's surprising to see how elderly have taken up to this form of entertainment and all the time they are yes 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 mobile phones and uh, it is uh, really surprising to see that they are not even if we make ourselves available to talk to them they are not available anymore uh, so uh, helping them to disconnect mm. and disengage with this form of entertainment and taking them to some active form of mm. uh, you know recreation uh, where they enjoying with their senses listening to some good music having something to taste and you know appreciating that texture or the aroma or the uh, you know the taste uh, engaging that taste buds simple yeah. techniques i think what you're trying to say dr agarwal is that it's good to it's good to slow down yeah but not give up yeah. it's good to sort of experience everything at a slower pace accept that stage of life but don't just give up and give in dr rana has something to add to that please yes. go ahead uh ma'am uh, with due respect can i please ask something to uh, through you to the society i mean uh, we as we were growing up yes. we have seen the elderly uh, you know getting retired at the age of uh, 
now we have seen uh, you know elderly getting retired at the age of 65 i would like to say to the society through you i mean this is my opinion and uh, you know uh, I, i might be right or wrong i believe that elderly uh, people are the treasure of the society right they have a lot of uh, things to give intellectuality to give to the society in the terms of their experience in the terms of riches of their uh, wisdom and uh, i feel that uh, they should uh, aim to be independent till as long as possible they should uh, they should mm. keep working till at uh, uh, you know i believe as long as possible if they keep working their mind will be exercised their body will be exercised they will be independent financially and they will feel important about themselves i believe that can solve uh, many of the problems so that is my humble opinion ma'am dr anai absolutely agree in fact there is an entire generation which keeps pressing on their parents to you know now you should just retire dad or now you should just retire no. mom and take it easy in life not knowing that retirement is actually not helping them they absolutely. this is their way of life this is their comfort zone this is their happy space and that must be encouraged and which is a huge huge learning curve for our generation which is seeing our kids grow and our parents age so we are that stage absolutely. where we have to manage both and both absolutely. are pretty similar in some ways as we discussed as well but before i end uh, dr chinu agarwal i have to talk about dietary issues we are flashing some of them on the screens but a lot of research talks about how your gut being your second brain is a major contributor to how you feel how you think so do you have some tips over there on what kind of diet one should look at in their senior years yeah so uh, we know that serotonin the endorphin which um, you know boosts happiness is uh, secreted in the gut not in the brain anywhere and so gut health is linked to brain health one of the things that we can help them to choose assist them is uh, whole grains whole food and um, you know staying away from three ss one is salt one is spice and one is sugar uh, but then they will say that fir rahi kya gaye you know what's remaining for us there is a lot remaining when we can avoid sugars and refined oils and there are hundreds of options that they can create for themselves why can't we encourage them to be involved in making their own menus for the day cooking for themselves cooking for others in the family having you know uh, times where we are all trying out new dishes more healthier options to eat and one of the things that we can make a routine for the entire family is consuming nuts in the morning some whole nuts like uh, uh, walnuts walnut is known uh, along with almond is known to boost brain health and then there are mood foods mood foods mm. don't have to be ice creams fatty or sugary things mood foods can be colorful salads and fruits and platters where uh, you know just looking them looking at them uh, you know uh, makes you feel good about them and you know uh, having things which are closer to your home rather than going for fancy foods and uh, Uh, shopping for things which mm. they have not consumed their entire life they they might not take to them their gut might not take to them they might not be able to digest them or absorb them whatever they have eaten accepting them and including them in their diet i think is going to help them uh, you know make it more palatable for them make it more acceptable uh, in the house i see so yeah hmm I see. I see. I think uh, easy, gentle life, easy, gentle activity, and easy and gentle diet—that should be the focus. And while it sounds quite easy, like we said, it, it's the it's adaptation to it quite gradually, which is the key here. But the good news that I'm going to take away from this is that early detection can help, early information can help, 
and staying curious can help. I think those yeah. are the good takeaways for a lot of our seniors watching right now. So thank you both for joining us and uh, keeping this uh, sort of chat so lively.